not about the end goal. It's about the process that one goes through and the value of that process. Again, whether you won a national championship or you didn't, you learn a winning process. It's how to be a winner. What is the process of being a winner, regardless of what the score says, regardless of whether you're on the lead feed on Twitter or your hashtag is chosen or your picture is all over the internet. It doesn't matter, right? It's the process of winning. When someone makes a mistake, they're gonna high five their teammate. They're gonna pick them up. When someone on the other team makes a great shot, they may say, nice shot, and run back down the court, right? Because we have a respect for our competition, a respect for the opportunity to play the game that they love. Thank you all for your time. Enjoy this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure, pleasure speaking with you, and we're gonna have an esteemed uh, panel come up here next. Again, some of the brightest and the best here at Stanford Athletics. Thank you all. Sports is so much bigger than any trophy or medal or win or loss. At the very core, sports is about family. And as a coach, it's my responsibility and my privilege to create that type of environment for our athletes, the type of family and support network that allows them to walk out on the competition floor, the field, or into a job for their dream interview or a dream position, or going on to the next phase of their life with confidence, their heads held high, knowing that with passion, commitment, balance, belief, and family, anything is possible. And I have to say, I wake up every morning at the farm and I just feel so lucky because not only do I get to work in sports, but I get to work with some of the best student athletes in the nation. And so I can't tell you how excited I am right now to introduce you to them. Can we give them a round of applause? Playing sports, whether it be individually on a team, uh, especially for girls, I think it just builds family. Uh, like my teammates are my best friends, and it's awesome to have that support system around you. And you get to just learn so many life lessons from playing sports and being around these people every day. I was competing internationally. I was on the U.S. national team for four years. Um, I had competed internationally multiple times, won many medals before coming to Stanford. I was an alternate for the 2012 Olympic team before um, deciding to come to Stanford in 2014, which was obviously a huge accomplishment. Um, and I definitely was at that point that you said I was ranked um, first in the world when I decided to come to Stanford. So I easily could have stayed and probably gone to World Championships that year and the next year, or two years later, was uh, the 2016 Olympic Games and probably had a good shot at making that team as well. But also what was really important to me in addition to gymnastics was my um, academic career as well. Ever since I was little, I knew I wanted to go to college. I wanted to be an engineer, which I'm pursuing right now. And it, like Catherine mentioned, she mentioned balance and having the, that, to me, that importance of academics is just as high as the importance of athletics. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind that you don't want to sacrifice absolutely everything for your sport. For me, gymnastics was obviously a huge part of my life, but it wasn't my entire life. I have four sisters and one brother, and my little brother is the youngest of us all, so it was myself and my sisters for a long time, and I really enjoyed it because my little brother is a little rascal. Uh, but um, my sisters all competed in sports, and my oldest sister actually went to University of uh, Nevada in Reno on a full track scholarship. And throughout just growing up in our lives, we were extremely competitive, and that's just what kind of drove us. And I'm very appreciative um, that my, all of my sisters play sports. Another inspiration other than her would be my mother, who actually had, had a Division I track scholarship to the University of Oregon. And so they always compete on who is faster. My mom always says she wins because she was a sprinter and my sister was a long jumper, but I tell them I'm faster than both of them. <laughs> um, but uh, they definitely always inspired me and I've always looked to um, compete and improve out here on the field so I can make my family proud. So the gymnastics facility is actually right next to where the rowers train. Um, and it's pretty monotonous. You guys are on the machines and they do the same motion for hours and hours. Um, and in a sport like that, how do you continue to stay motivated doing the same movements over and over for such a long period of time? Oh, yeah. We always joke that that's kind of the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over. But um, 
I think, similar to other sports, you kind of get in a, a zone where you're so focused on what you're doing, and sometimes your mind can wander to other places, but you have a goal and you're, it's staring at you in the face. We have our screen right in front of us. Um, and in the boat, it feels really differently. You're watching the water move across from you. You're watching the sunrise. You're competing with boats across from you. Um, so it really is the whole environmental experience of being on the water with other people in a competitive setting that makes it just, you get into kind of like a flow where it doesn't seem like you're doing the same thing over and over, but you're, you're going places. I definitely think when I started rowing, my goal was to get to college and compete at this level. Um, so now my goal, I think as a senior especially, is raising up the lower class and underclassmen on my team um, and trying to be a role model, but also trying to be someone that's there to support them holistically. There's only so much I could do out on the water competitively, but I also want to be a teammate and someone who can raise other people up and let them know that they also have a shot at competing in that role in this together. So I think that's become my motivation now is Yes, I'm there to compete, but I'm also there to support and be there for my teammates. So we're here celebrating National Girls and Women in Sports Day. And have there been any influential women in your life who have helped you along the way and helped you achieve the goals that you have? Yeah, um, obviously my mother. Um, I, like growing up, I, I definitely did not appreciate her enough. Waking up at you know 4:45 every morning, and taking me to practice. Um, it's, it's not really until you start <laughs> driving yourself to practice that you realize like really what a sacrifice that is. Um, so yeah, just definitely my mom. Uh, I think it's really important to get out there and support each other, um, especially our women's sports because um, you know, it's, I, I recognize what an impact sports has had on my life and I firmly believe in you know, being the change that you want to see in the world. Um, so I try and do my part to go out and support. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, a long journey since, you know, we first stepped on campus freshman year. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I've gotten from Stanford is just general confidence. Um, I think if you had asked me to do a panel like this when I first got here as a freshman, it would have been very tough. Uh, there would have been a lot of stuttering, a lot of shaking. So I think um, getting the opportunity to, you know, lead my team um, and be a leader in the Stanford community gives you, uh, opens up the ability to be able to come out in front of crowds, uh, you know, go to business interviews, um, you know, if I want to go play pro, um, be able to go and you know bring that confidence with me that you know I believe in myself firmly, and wherever I go, I know that I have skills that I can put towards um, any endeavor. My childhood was kind of all about watching the English Premier League, watching Barcelona and Real Madrid, all the big games. Uh, other kids, you know, watch Saturday morning cartoons. I watch Saturday morning EPL games uh, with my dad. So when I kind of think about my childhood, it's you know sitting on the counter when my mom was looking, um, and you know watching those games with my dad. Um, but I think I really fell in love with sports uh, probably when I was, you know, entering high school age um, when I realized, you know, there is really a pathway here. Uh, this is something that I could do for the rest of my life. This is uh, a way for me to become the person that I want to be. Um, so I think kind of right around then when I really started to devote, you know, more time and energy individually practicing, you know, seeking out different ways to get better, that's when I uh, really fell in love with sports.